Okay, so this is going to be our final um, presentation in the reactions section. Um, the, the thing about this one, it's going to maybe come across a little differently um, because it's not... I mean, it's, it's, it's related to reaction writing, but it is also related to data that you will get um, throughout a, a um, lab type of an activity. Um, so this is called gravimetric analysis. Um, as we begin this, think about what that means. Um, gravimetric analysis. What in the heck is this? Well, break down the word. Um, you'll hear me say that probably a thousand times. Gravimetric analysis. Grav gravity. Like gravity is what gives you mass and mass is really taking weights. And so when you say something is gravimetric, you're saying that you have masses involved. Um, and that is really what we're talking about. Um, so the actual definition of gravimetric analysis, it's quantitative, meaning that you do have numbers. Um, the amount of a species is going to be isolated and weighed. So um, when, if you've ever done a reaction where you've created a precipitate and then you have filtered that precipitate, that's isolating it. And then if you've weighed that precipitate, well, technically you've done a gravimetric analysis. So it's really nothing special. Um, but the word isolated that's in this definition, it basically just means that you've filtered something that you've, you've moved it from one stage to another stage so that you actually would be able to dry it and then finally weigh it. So pretty simple. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you to do really quick, um, you'll need to pause the video in a second, is to do what the bullet point says. Read the problem. Read it carefully. Read it slowly. And then I'm going to ask you what you think. So pause for one second. Read it. Careful. Okay, so now that you've read it, what do you think? I bet you're saying something like, oh my gosh, that's what? <laughs> so yeah, it's a little confusing. Um, but what I want to do is break it down for you um, a little bit slower, okay? So on this uh, slide, you can see I still have the problem up here at the top. And the first question that I would ask you is, well, what's happening? What reactions are actually occurring in this, um, in this problem? So notice that um, the first couple of sentences here, they're kind of describing to you the reactions that you're doing. They mention to you that you are dissolving limestone and hydrochloric acid. Well, let's write the reaction for that. Why don't we? Because um, they say that limestone is mostly um, the calcium carbonate. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, the hydrochloric acid here, I've already broken down into ions because it is a strong acid. And um, considering that we're talking about limestone, which is a rock, that's why I have the calcium carbonate listed here as a solid. Okay, so what's going to happen is, of course, your, the acid um, will begin to break down the solid. The calcium will go with the chloride, and the hydrogen will go with the carbonate. But remember... Okay, this is one where you got to go back a few uh, presentations. If we produce carbonic acid, H2CO3, oh man, that's the whole carbonation thing. That doesn't fit. That doesn't like water. It actually breaks down. It's unstable. So that's why you see H2O and CO2 out here because remember that was the product that you would actually form in the end from your um, carbonic acid. Okay, so we've got our reactions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out the spectator ion. And then what other reaction is happening? Well, it says that I've precipitated a calcium ion as calcium oxalate, which would be the way that it would be wrapped up into the precipitate. And I did that with the use of the chemical sodium oxalate. And they give us all those uh, chemical... Um, chemical formulas up in the problem. So it's going to begin... So this... this uh, problem looks like this. I have calcium ions that I'm trying to precipitate. So what it means is basically I'm taking the calcium from right here and I'm bringing it here and I'm supposed to try to precipitate that calcium, that calcium with the sodium oxalate, which I've now split into ions here. So when I do that, it says I'm trying to precipitate calcium oxalate, which means the calcium and the oxalate have to go together and that leaves the poor sodium all by himself a spectator, and out he goes. So hopefully you can kind of follow what I'm doing with those reactions. Um, and just so you're aware, I would not expect you to go quite this far, maybe right now, um, but a little more practice, and I think we'll get there. Um, the other thing that we know from the problem is that we started with 128.3 milligrams of limestone, and that at the end of this whole process, we had 140.2 milligrams of calcium oxalate that we precipitated. 
all of the calcium, and this is an assumption we have to make. This is extremely important. We have to make the assumption that all the calcium that was in the 123 point, I'm sorry, 128.3 milligrams made it out here. We have to make that assumption. Otherwise, the whole thing breaks down. So once you take a problem like this and really try to dissect it and break it down, um, you're, I hope you will recognize that there's sort of a starting point that has to be um, obvious now. I know I had 128.3 grams of lime, milligrams of limestone. And I know I made 140.2 milligrams of calcium oxalate. Um, but tell me, which one of those do I know an exact amount of calcium? The 128 or the 140? I'm hoping you said the 140. Um, that has to be your starting point. I don't know, they because they said back in the problem, I, let me go back a second, um, my apologies. Um, they said that a sample of limestone, which is mostly calcium carbonate, what that means is that it's not all calcium carbonate. Um, however, the calcium oxalate part, I know that that's made of pure calcium. So this has to be my starting point, and my first step is pretty straightforward. Just get the milligrams into grams. After that, um, it should be a little bit clear too. Well, wait a second. When in grams, convert to moles. And when in moles of one thing, you tend to want to convert to moles of another thing. And in the case of this, it's whatever thing you want. Well, I want calcium. I want to know how much calcium I have. So follow the progression here. I've got my gram amount of calcium oxalate. And I want to know how many moles that is. Because once I'm in moles, that's apples and apples, and I can compare. I can use molar, molar um, ratios. So here, my molar ratio might look a little strange. Um, one mole of calcium oxalate contains one mole of calcium. Well, that's because right here, sorry, give my cursor back. Because right here, there's a little imaginary one. So one calcium ion goes into the calcium oxalate, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And now that I'm in um, the terms of calcium, I can then use a, um, the molar mass of calcium just to get to my regular old calcium to recognize the total gram amount of calcium that was in the calcium oxalate I started with. Okay? That makes sense? Hopefully, hopefully. Okay, once I know how much calcium is in there, remember I'm trying to figure out what was the percent of calcium that I started with in my limestone sample. So if I know that I have reacted this many grams of calcium, well really now what I need to know is, well, how much does that make up of the original? So the 128.3 milligrams, here I've just converted it to grams. I've taken my gram amount of the pure calcium I found, and I've just done division. So the 0 0.04389 grams of calcium divided by the total starting amount of limestone multiplied by 100 tells me that I've got 34.2% calcium in my limestone. Um, so if you need to, you know, definitely study this a little bit, make sure it makes sense to you, but you're starting to understand, I think at this point that when it comes to stoichiometry and when it comes to molar calculations and ratios, there's options. You don't just have to take out coefficients from a chemical reaction, but you can actually use coefficients, um, based on the chemical formulas. You've got options. Um, Another thing that's really important to recognize from this problem in particular, um, and you'll see this a lot, is that they start you off in problems a lot of times with an impure sample. That limestone, it wasn't pure calcium carbonate. There were impurities mixed in with it. And so they really like questions like that where they can ask you to figure out how much is of the you know pure type of chemical that they're asking you about. So these should be some things that you, um, you know, are starting to get your feet wet with, you're starting to understand better, and then you'll be more successful as we continue on. So that is it, ladies and gents. Um, and we'll talk about it tomorrow in class. See you later.